Movie Ticket Radio. Welcome to the original movie hits format. And the Movie Ticket Radio podcast. It's the hits you hear in movies on the radio. I'm career broadcaster J.R. Russ and a Hall of Fame broadcaster John Records Landecker and an explanation of why this podcast. Streaming right now 24-7 at MovieTicketRadio.com or on TuneIn, you will hear the hits you hear in movies. Now, music has been in the movies even before there were talkies when they would have piano players in the theaters. Once sound was added to motion pictures, when there was music in the movies, they were generally musical movies with song and dance. Then around the 60s, more music was added to regular movies, comedies, dramas, etc. And there was generally a movie theme, a love theme that was a softer, sweeter one quite often, and a recurring theme like the James Bond theme that runs over and over again in action sequences. Well, by the 1980s, after rock and roll was around for about 20 years, things changed again, and more and more oldies begin to appear in movies. Songs are put in movies for four general reasons. One is to be discovered. A new song like My Heart Will Go On in Titanic. Songs are also put in to evoke an emotion. And songs are also used to designate a point in time or to change the pacing of the movie. So if you like movies and you like music, you're going to love Movie Ticket Radio. And this podcast is just another way to bring it to you and talk about the movies. That's right, we're going to talk about the music, but not play any of the music, and you can probably guess why. Well, that's very simple, because we don't want to pay for it. (laughs) uh, uh, And that's pretty much it, because anytime that you use uh, licensed copyright stuff, then you have to pay for it, but only if you play it. So if you don't play it, you don't have to pay for it. So we're talking about it instead of playing it, because... We don't get paid anything. No. <laughs> no. And and that's the whole idea about podcasts. Yeah. So, and by the right. way, if you're listening to this podcast, <laughs> we're going to give you information on how to contact us, which right now it's movieticketradio at gmail.com. Please write us with your idea of how we can make money with this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to ask for like your playlist from the films. Or what you really oh, like no. in the movies. Oh, no. Oh, I, no. I want to make money first. How do we make money? That's the important thing. Actually, that should be the name of this podcast. How do we make money? Yeah, because, you know, we're out there trying to make a living. We have to have food and a roof Indeed. over our heads and things like that. Right. So we're bothering right. doing this. We really want to do this all the time. But in order to do this all the time, we have to make money at it. So that's please, right. try to help us out, won't you? <laughs> So it's showtime. Our very first podcast is the 1989 movie When Harry Met Sally, a romantic comedy or rom-com featuring the very funny Billy Crystal and the very lovable Meg Ryan. Uh, right. I, I had such a crush on Meg Ryan, let me tell you. And with the, with the famous uh, I'll Have What She's Having. Scene. Oh, yes. That was Rob Reiner's mother, Estelle, who did that line and. Sadly, she passed in 2008, but still goes down as having one of the funniest lines in movie history. Yep. It was interesting because Our Love is Here to Stay, which was a uh, George and Ira Gershwin song, was performed by Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald. But then they also had another version where Harry Connick Jr. did it in the Mm. movie. And they had the same thing go on with Let's Call the Whole Thing Off, uh, which was another Gershwin tune and both... Armstrong, Fitzgerald, and then Harry Connick did it. And then uh, this is kind of a breakout movie for Harry Connick Jr. because he did a number of other songs. Uh, They had another one where he uh, copied or or also did It Had to Be You, which they had the Frank Sinatra version, and then uh, Harry Connick Jr. Um, You know, for people that are keeping score, Isham Jones and Gus Kahn wrote it. I like that. Yeah. I like that when we say who wrote it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes it's interesting because you go, I didn't know he wrote that. Yeah. Or you never heard of the person at all. Yeah. And now they're getting their due, finally. Mm -hmm. And uh, Don't Get Around Much Anymore. Again, another old song uh, by Duke Ellington and Bob Russell, uh, also sung by Harry Connick Jr. Well, um, Harry Connick Jr., Certainly left his mark on this film soundtrack. Stomping at the Savoy. Uh, oh, is it Savoy? I'm sorry. Savoy. 
stopping at the Savoy. Yep, a Benny Goodman, Chick Webb, Edgar Sampson, and Andy Razif compilation. <laughs> Man, you get four guys. They must have been the members of the band, and they all kind of worked on it. This is sort of like the Grammys. Yeah. And the song of the year written by, you know, a yep. bunch of people. And the winner is a bunch of people you never heard of. But, but Perry Connick Jr. Hey, sang it. So there you go. Right. And then he also did I Could Write a Book, which was Lawrence Hart and Richard Rogers, which I guess that's Rogers and Hammerstein originally. You know, yeah. Partner. Yep. Uh, he also did But Not For Me, a Gershwin tune. And Autumn in New York, which was Vernon Duke's uh, pen. And uh, he did that one. So really a breakout Harry Connick Jr. music movie. You know, he just really so much stuff. Yeah. In there. But then there was other pop stuff. And, and some of this was there like in the I'll have what she's having seen in the diner. There's a lot of stuff playing in the background on the jukebox. Right. So that again, that's in it's in the movie. So it's a movie ticket radio song. There you go. Don't Pull Your Love by Hamilton, Joe Frank. And Reynolds. But he was Joe Frank Corallo was his real name. And he used Joe Frank. And Tommy Reynolds no, wait a just minute. used Reynolds. Are you, are you telling me that there's only two people? Uh, Isn't there a Hamilton? Yeah, well, according to this. But yeah, I thought there was Hamilton, Joe Frank, Joe and Frank Reynolds. Joe Frank and Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess just those two guys wrote it. I don't, I don't know. Oh, 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 oh. Right. Okay. The thing at the, uh, which I find to be very cool about movie ticket radio and songs that are, uh, that you've heard on the radio that are in the movies are, is exactly this, where you go through a bunch of, um, songs who are, you know, like we're back in the thirties and forties with Harry Connick Jr. and then bang, same movie you've got. Don't pull your love, Ramblin' Man, right time of the night. Um, yeah. Which of course are cont more contemporary pop AM radio hits from the, uh, seventies. And they're all in the same film. And I just think that that's, to me, I find that very intriguing, interesting and entertaining. Well, the concept for movie ticket radio actually kind of got started with my friend, uh, Jeff Goldberg. He and I started in radio in 1972 in South Haven, Michigan at WJOR, which we said meant worst junk on radio. Uh, <laughs> Big 940, or we just called it Big Nine. The and Big Nine. it was a middle of the road station during the week. But on the weekends, all the Chicago and Detroit and Grand Rapids kids would come in and take over the, the beach on Lake Michigan. So he knew that the adults weren't listening. So he, uh, the owner uh, let us rock it. And it was basically play whatever you want. Just don't lose the license. Don't swear. Mm. Don't, you know, whatever. Right. And right. so we went in there and just rocked it. In fact, I got a whole movie concept on that. But um, we went in and played that. And his daughter, a teenage daughter, came home one night from a movie some years ago. And she's humming a, so a song, you know, kind of like. Wah, wah, wah. And he says, well, what are you humming? She says, oh, I heard this new song in a movie. It was, it was pretty interesting. And he said, honey, that's canned heat. And on the road again. That's a sixties song. And she says, Well, I never heard it before, so you know exactly. it's new to me. Right. That's what happens is the movie going population is still, once we get, I think, back out of COVID and get back to some normalcy, uh, is generally eighteen to twenty four are the prime moviegoers. And they're the ones that are discovering these older songs and now they're new songs to them and they're like, Hey, that's pretty cool. So, you know, there isn't just new music that's in new movies. Well, I think one of the examples that you're referring to is uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. The first uh, film that came out had Come Get Your Love by Redbone, which was a hit in the 70s. And then all of a sudden, all you heard anywhere was Come Get Your Love by Redbone. Yep. Because it had made it into the soundtrack of that film. Kids of that age group that you were talking about attended it. We're like, hey, this is a great tune. What song is that? So guess what? Radio starts playing it again, and Redbone makes some more money. Plus, of course, whoever owned the rights to Redbone's song had to be paid by the filmmaker, so who knows how much cash was involved. That's right. Know. Yeah. Well, well, stay tuned because there's a special alert regarding that in just a few moments. Oh. Yeah. Okay, kind of a spoiler alert there. So uh, go finishing up the... Uh, 
music that is in uh, When Harry Met Sally, which I thought this was really interesting. Right Time of the Night, it was a big radio hit by Jennifer Warren's. Yeah. But I found it was written by Peter McCann. You know what song? He had a hit. Remember? Pete, wait a minute. Peter McCann. Come on. Uh, no. One Hit Wonder. Yeah. What was it? Do you want to make love or do you just want to fool around? I know that. Actually, no. But what was the name of the song? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Uh, that's right. <laughs> so it's, there you go. There's a guy that wrote more music than some. I've heard this. Uh, it's a good thing this isn't color radio because I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Oh, you. That's like a, a bad morning show. Oh, yeah. John. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Tee hee hee. <laughs> Uh, okay, finishing up, we got Ella Fitzgerald singing Where or When, written by Lawrence Hart and Richard Rogers. And then uh, this was interesting, Plain Q, P-L-A-N-E-Q, from Casablanca, written by Max Steiner. And I think as they were parting, they kind of flash back to the scene from Casablanca where the plane engine starts and there's mm -hmm, come right. orchestra thing they call that yeah. a cue a lot and i think they played that in there so that got credit as did la marseille which is the french national anthem that was also in casablanca and that was uh in the movie arranged by max steiner and then there was also gosh there's there's so much more here because it took place at christmas time so winter wonderland sung by ray charles was in it written by felix bernard and richard b smith who Credited as Dick Smith. <laughs> and the Surrey with a fringe on top. Now, and this is weird because it says uncredited, but then it's credited to Richard Rogers and Oscar Hammerstein the, the second, which Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan sung. So eh, technically, I don't usually do songs that were sung by the actors. Right. But only a few. Uh, maybe like I, I did some of the ABBA songs from the ABBA movie. The first film, though, that actually broke ABBA, as far as I'm concerned, is Muriel's Wedding. Oh, yeah? Have you ever seen? No. Oh, yeah. That was an Australian movie, and ABBA is central to the soundtrack and also part of the plot. And that's the first time I was like, wow, listen to all this ABBA music in this movie. It's a great movie, by oh, the way. Okay. Uh, Muriel's Wedding. I'm trying to think of the actress who plays the lead because... She's pretty well known now, but then uh, this was made in um, Australia. Well, vamp uh, for a couple more seconds. Just vamp. So, um, uh, so Tony Collette, Belinda Jarrett. Tony Kate. Collette. Okay. Tony Collette. Tony Collette. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she was Muriel. We have the technology, so we damn well try to use it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and this, I, this is weird. Uh, this uh, Say It Isn't So was in the movie, but I don't think it's the Hall and Oates one because it was written by Irving Berlin. I doubt it, that it is. The it doesn't say who one. performed it. Now, I want to see if you can pick. Is that your dog crying there? He's got to yeah, go out. Um, you have to yeah, go out. Can you, want, can you pause? Yeah, for let's a pause and, and we'll let, uh, uh, let the, the puppy dog go take out. A, take a pee. The oh, dog's going to Hey, uh, we oh, all we, got it. In fact, you know, maybe I will too. All we'll right. Be, we'll, we'll be we'll right back. back. <laughs> Come on. Here we go. Let's go outside. So moving along to the last few songs and when Harry met Sally, and I'm going to see if you can pick up on this and finish it for me. Uh, All right. The Mozart String Quintet E-flat major is in it, and it was written by Wolfgang Amadeus. Amadeus, 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 Amadeus. That's right. Again, not said who performed it, and then Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Ralph Christmas. Blaine and Hugh Martin performed by Bing Crosby. Isn't it romantic? The traditional old Agzine, also not credited in the movie. And all right, all right, chillin'. Louis Armstrong did, uh, oh, he did old Agzine. Hmm. Lyrics by Robert Burns. All those songs can be found in the movie When Harry Met Sally, and probably more that weren't listed, but I think that's all the time we have, don't you think? Uh, I think uh, Harry has met Sally, and yeah, uh, and she's should, and she's had the big O them. in the in yeah, the diner, 
and we'll all be having what she's having. And, yes. Uh, it's time to leave them for, they probably want some quiet time together. Thanks for checking out our new YouTube channel. And as always, like, share, and subscribe. Tell people about the Movie Ticket Radio podcast and MovieTicketRadio.com, the hits you hear in movies. And next time for our second podcast, we're going to look at the HBO movie Clear History with Larry David and Amy Landecker. Okay, well, let's do it. So, hey, we want to thank you for listening to the Movie Ticket Radio podcast. And if you have movie suggestions or want to tell us how you think we can make money, you can email (laughs) us at MovieTicketRadio at gmail.com and don't forget to check out movieticketradio.com to hear the hits from the movies on the radio or the internet uh, check out WNBI LP FM in New Buffalo, Michigan uh, that has a uh, effective radiated power of a toaster and uh, not much stronger but a bigger city is uh, WEBR in Niagara Falls, Buffalo and uh, they're uh, AM on 1440, but they're also streaming at WEBRradio.com. And they play movie ticket radio on Saturday and Sunday nights. So uh, they do uh, like 12 hours a weekend. So they're doing That's a bunch great. of it. And, yeah. uh, and he's uh, actually adding the, the program director, uh, uh, Dave Gillen, is adding more newer songs. They're an adult standards station, but he's starting to play more kind of rocky stuff, especially as the evening goes on. And some of the older folks that listen to the station start to go to dreamland. He starts rocking it up a little bit. So he's playing that, that stuff. So And uh, also movie ticket radio available on TuneIn. And I had apps too, but they've run out. I think somebody hacked them too. So I'd be careful if you get one of the apps off the uh, iTunes or the Play Store because they may not work right. right. You can always do the TuneIn app and look for Movie Ticket Radio. Put in the classic version. That's the prime one we're doing. And uh, we're good. So I'm J.R. Russ. I'm John Landecker. And Records truly is his middle name. It is. We're going to just clarify that. So don't ask, please. Right. It's it's getting to the point where it's ridiculous now. Totally. You should know this. And uh, thanks a lot for listening. Check us out next time on the Movie Ticket Radio podcast. Movie Ticket Radio.